我回去吃吧。没猜你不知道。And uh, uh, went to Beijing University and studied Chinese language, and then he fell ill. And like today, uh, we blame technology and the environment. So he got he got a disease that was not a disease, like didn't feel good, uh, didn't digest anything, headaches. And the doctor said he was crazy because he, the doctor could not find any problems, but he couldn't go to university. And after a year and a half university, he quit and uh, couldn't attend classes. And the only thing he could do uh, at that time was to go for a walk and could not even do any exercise, could not uh, do a martial art. Then he heard about Wu style, which was very slow. And he started, uh, started learning Wu style, but four months into Wu style, the Wu style teacher heard about the Chen style. At that time, Chen Fa Ke went to Beijing. So his teacher was, I'll write it on top here. So the year was 1928. So in 1928, Chen Fa Ke from the Chen village went to Beijing. And uh, by 19, he went, went to Beijing, and for two years, nobody heard about him. And so the actual date was, a year was two, uh, 1928. But in 1930, somebody started to, people started to hear about him. And the Hong Junsheng was in a Wu style class. The Wu style teacher invited Chen Fa Ke to the school to show what Chen Taiji was like. So people know that. Uh, one version of the story, we probably are from different schools, we have different versions. One version is that Taiji was created in the Chen family in one county, Henan province. And uh, that was during the end of Ming Dynasty and the beginning of Qing Dynasty. Chen Fa Ke was the eight, uh, 17th generation descendant of the Chen family. And when he came to Beijing, the, uh, at that time, the other, all the normal styles, Yang style, Wu style, uh, style Wu Hao style, and Sun style, they were directly linked to Chen style. And there were other internal styles that came from the Wudang mountains. So it was acknowledged that the Chen style was ahead of the other four. So the Wu style teacher immediately said, well, this guy came from the Chen village. This is where our Taiji originated. We've got to see this guy. And uh, so the story is, I wrote the story, it's called Pull Up a Chair. So the story was that Master Liu Mu San, at that time, in Wu style and Yang style in Beijing, the fame of Taiji was that it was very, very slow. A beginner will take 15 minutes to do the form. Advanced teachers usually half an hour, 40 minutes. So Master Liu Mu San said, I'm inviting the master directly from the Chen village. He's so good, I assume he will do the form and it will take three, four hours. And so on a Saturday morning, so he said to the students, bring your own chair because you can't stand there for so, so long because if you move around, that would be not respectful. So everybody brought a chair and it sat down in a courtyard. It wasn't a school. Chen Fa Ke came and he saw like a setup like this. And he, I guess, I'm, now I'm making things up. He said, my God, these guys again. <laughs> it's like they are going to go like this forever. He says, I'm not going to do that. So he did cannon fist, second set, which is the fighting set. And when he finished it in two and a half minutes, he just bowed and left. I said, thank you very much and left because he did not want to stay for questions because he was in Beijing already for two years. Every time he saw people, people attacked him. He says, like, what are you trying to do? This is Taiji, like, you, you are doing Shaolin because he was too fast, too powerful. <coughs> so after he left, Master Liu Mu San, the Wu style teacher, said, the Beijing courtyard were covered with green uh, not really green, it's gray. We call them a gray, a gray, almost like this cement color bricks. But the bricks, the Chinese old bricks, till today, the local bricks are fairly soft. And if you've been to the Great Wall, the bricks are this big. Every five years you have to replace them, uh, to replace them because they're almost like uh, chalk, fairly loose. 
So after he left, and the people noticed, most of the bricks in this center area were broken. But even like that, because they were flat, and the normal people can't break them. And his cannon fist broke many, many pieces. So Liu Musan said, well, we don't understand his Taiji. It did not look like Taiji. But since he was so powerful, he must have put a lot of energy into it. He says, I'm going to invite him back. And this time, forget about the form. I'm going to push hands with him and see what happens. And at that time, the people in Beijing were very careful about martial art. So Master Liu said, in his class, about 20 people, said, if Master Chen loses, nobody's allowed to say anything. Because, you know, he's here to make a living. And if we shame him, how can he live? He came from the village and you know, trying to make a name for himself in the big city. But if I lose, he said, I don't want to teach anymore. So we all learn from him. <coughs> so the re the, what happened was, so he invited him and he started and saying this. And Master Chen says, oh, OK, well, this is a very, very nice challenge. Thank you very much. But you know, you teach old people, you do this. He says, but I'm from the Chen village. I cannot have a push hands session with you. He says, but since you made a request, he said, I'll satisfy your request. So he went like this here, says, if I move anything, I lose. He says, for you, you never lose. Whatever happens, let's have fun. And uh, <clears throat> then he looked around, saw a wicker chair in the corner. He says, do you like that chair? And Master Wu says, yeah, uh, Master Liu Musan says, yeah, when I teach, when students start working, I go and sit, sit there. He said, come over here. And Master Liu came here. He made one move and threw Master Liu into that chair. And uh, so Master Liu Musan said to his students, says, we are now all Chen style Tai Chi students. And that was in 1930. So this is how we got Chen style Tai Chi Chuan. And my, my teacher, Hong Junsheng, was in that class. He told me that story. He was one of the 24 people. And uh, another person there is called uh, uh, Pan Yongzhou. Uh, Pan Yongzhou. I don't know the, uh, he went to Taiwan. So there were two of them authentically in the first class Chen Fa Ke taught. When the Japanese came, they all went all over the place. Master Pan went to Taiwan and continued to teach. And Hong went to Jinan. And they thought that all the others were, uh, died. So uh, in the 1980s, Master Pan sent a student to Jinan and found Master Hong and uh, talked about that time in 1930. So this story is the first time Chen style Tai Chi Chuan came out. Before, only Yang Lu Chan went to the Chen village, studied, and came out and taught a version of Yang style. Because he did not want to other people to see the Chen style. And for whatever reason, he taught a style later on. It's called the Yang style. And his family name is also Yang. But Yang style was a little bit of different because he taught a lot of royalties in Beijing. And they didn't want to work hard. He made it very slow. But the Yang family themselves continue to do the core Chen style uh, stuff, which is a martial art, fighting very hard. And they do that closed doors, uh, clo in, uh, with closed doors. So now there are lots of uh, stories, because you see them outside very light. They close the door, you hear a lot of noise. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it's uh, the uh, story. So Hong Junsheng studied with Chen Fa Ke for 14 years. And then the war broke out, and he went to Jinan, and never saw Chen Fa Ke for uh, 14, another 14 years. So in 1956, my teacher's wife passed away, and he was quite upset. Went to Beijing to relax and kind of get away from where he and his wife lived, and went to visit Chen Fa Ke, and lived with him for six more months. And during that time, he studied for four months every day with Chen Fa Ke. And at that time, that his form was already slightly different. We know that when you learn something, <coughs> there will always be differences. When you are in the same class, you are always the same. 
when you go away to a place and live for many years and teach on your own, you start doing research and you feel, oh, here, maybe like this. And then gradually your style will take on your personality. So we call this practical method because my teacher's teaching is not the same as the teachings of other disciples of Chen Fa Ke. Good or bad, I think it's not essential. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn